Batman The Brave and the Bold was a truly amazing TV show. It was a different take on the Cape Crusader, as most animated shows make him a gritty detective loner who's always in the shadows. But this show was lively, fun and colourful, with Batman always teaming up with other heroes from the Justice League. As the writers have said, it's a different imagining of the Dark Knight, and basically a love letter to the Silver Age of comics. But despite its lighter tone, this show still managed to get very dark at times, and had quite a lot of deaths, especially compared to most animated Batman shows. And this video is going to count down the 5 most tragic deaths in Batman The Brave and the Bold. Number 5. Batman and Catwoman This is one of those typical, the hero is retired and now they live happily ever after stories. But as we all know, a happy ending is only possible if you don't tell the whole story. Which is why Batman and Catwoman are both killed by the Joker's son. Thankfully their son Damien survives, but like his father before him, he has become an orphan as a child, watching his parents die in front of him at the hands of a villain. And he has to deal with that grief. It's tragic to watch and heartbreaking for poor Damien, as the Bat family just can't seem to get a break. But their deaths do lead to Damien accepting his destiny and becoming the new Robin, and then eventually the next Batman, as he is the rightful heir to the cow. Of course, it's later revealed that this isn't part of the show's official continuity, so I had to place it in last place on this list, even though it's tragic enough that it really deserves to be higher. Number 4. Black Canary now this isn't the main Black Canary who features in the show, but instead her mother, a hero from the Justice Society of America, which is the precursor to the Justice League. And this death is actually rather simple, and it's not so much about how she dies as the effect that it has on those around her. She is killed on mission and crushed by falling debris, and with her last words she asks the hero Wildcat to look after her daughter. And he and the other heroes of the Justice Society of America do. They become a kind of surrogate family for Black Canary, teaching her all that they know. Though they are a little bit overprotective of her, as they, understandably, are scared that she'll die fighting a villain just like her mother did. As I say, we don't really know that much about this Black Canary, so it's not as tragic as the rest of this list. We don't really see her mother that much. But still, it's an emotional moment for the Justice Society, especially Wildcat, and it defines all of the next Black Canary's life even though she never understood why the heroes treated her like a fragile egg all the time. Not until Wildcat talks about her mother's death and her last request, and she fully understands why they treat her that way. Number 3. Blue Beetle This is the second version of the Blue Beetle, Ted Cord. Now, this version of the Blue Beetle could never get the Scarab to work for him, so instead he used his billions and his genius mind to invent gadgets and fight crime without powers. Kind of like a happier version of Batman, but with a Blue Beetle motif instead of bats. Which may actually explain why he and Batman are such good friends. But Ted still wants to use the Scarab as it does have amazing powers. So he lets his uncle Jarvis experiment on it to see if he can get it to work for Ted. Unfortunately, his uncle never had any interest in helping him, and instead just wanted to get his hands on the Scarab so that he could use it to build a robot army and power them in a bid to take over the world and part of his plan involves sending a missile to attack a lot of innocent people. And since he probably wouldn't have been able to do this without access to the Scarab, Ted Cord feels responsible. Though of course he isn't really, after all he's not the one who built the missile and launched it. But even still, Ted Cord jumps onto the missile to take out the guidance system, meaning that it won't detonate anywhere except in mid-air. Unfortunately, he doesn't have an escape plan for this, so when the missile does detonate, Ted Cord goes with it. And he also hid the scarab on the missile, so when it does detonate, it gets scattered into the ocean and eventually is found by Jaime Reyes, the third Blue Beetle. So in his death, he did give birth to the next great hero, but it is still a shame that he had to die. Now, sacrificing yourself is very common in the hero world, but really, the world has enough dead heroes. And although in comics the dead don't stay dead for long, in this show, when you die, you pretty much stay dead forever. Number 2. Bawana Beast now, this guy is one of your weirder superheroes. His costume is bold, to say the least, and his power is a little bit goofy. He can combine creatures together to make a brand new beast, such as a horse and a spider, to create an eight-legged horse that can jump really high, run insanely fast, and of course, stick to walls. And to be frank, a lot of people look down upon this character and consider his power to be a bit lame. But the Faceless Hunter sees the potential this power has, 
And so when the Justice League defeat the mind-controlling Starro Spores, the Hunter uses machines to take control of a wannabe's powers and combines all of the Starro Spores into a monolith Starro that is unstoppable. Quite literally, as the combined might of the entire Justice League can't even slow it down. And so the only way for the world to be safe is for the Wanna Beast to use his power to separate all of the Starros. But the problem is that combining them in the first place overloaded his powers to maximum and almost killed him. And so undoing it took all that was left and kills him. And he sacrificed his life to stop a rampaging monster that couldn't be stopped any other way and would have killed countless people across the earth. So he does die a hero, but he does still die. And this leaves a scar on his friends in the Justice League and on his girlfriend, Vixen. He does do the right thing, but sadly, doing the right thing often demands quite a heavy sacrifice. Number one, Doom Patrol. In this episode, Batman has to reassemble the Doom Patrol team and they're all pretty much washed up losers. One is basically a freak at the fair and not even a popular draw. Robot Man is a crash test dummy who's got extreme anger issues. The Chief just stays in his house. And Elastigirl is an overweight rich bitch who's mean to everyone. But Batman gets them back together as a team and in fighting shape. Only to discover that getting them back together was all a trap by their enemy, General Zal. And we then learn that the Doom Patrol split up in the first place and went their separate ways because they were forced to sacrifice an innocent civilian in order to save the country of France and to capture General Zal. And they just couldn't live with the guilt and shame of having done this. But the General wants the world to know that the Doom Patrol basically suck. So he sets up two bombs. One bomb is on an island of innocent people and the other bomb is on an island with the Doom Patrol. And the Doom Patrol get to pick which one will blow up. Now the general believes that the Doom Patrol are petty and selfish and so they will of course save themselves and let the other island of people get blown up. So he broadcasts what's happening all around the world so that the whole world will see them for who they really are. But of course who they really are is a group of heroes and they sacrifice their lives to save these civilians. Now usually in a case like this the heroes will of course offer to sacrifice themselves but then they will also stop the bombs from going off anyway. But not this time. Batman fails to stop the explosion and we watch as the Doom Patrol are killed in the line of duty. It's a very emotional scene, not only because we expect Batman to save them, but because it shows us what a hero really is. It's not about the powers they have or the fights they get into, but instead it's about being able to sacrifice everything for the good of others, to put other people's needs before your own. And that's exactly what the Doom Patrol did. But it also doubles as redemption as the group hate themselves for not saving that civilian back in Paris. And in giving their lives to save this new group, they feel as if they've absolved themselves from this guilt. And though I don't really consider the incident in Paris their fault, as they were in a difficult situation, I would still say that in this moment, they do redeem themselves. And that is the five most tragic deaths in Batman the Brave and the Bold. Do you agree that these are the most tragic deaths? Or would you have chosen others? And which one of these is your favorite death? Be sure to let us know in the comments and I'd like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.